What is going on you guys? My name is Marcus and you're watching Roads Untraveled. We're back with another truck review. Here in front of me is the 2019 Honda Ridgeline Black Edition. It's got plenty of features inside and out that I think a lot of you guys will appreciate. So let's get into it. So the Ridgeline Black Edition that's here in front of me today is listed at $52,000 Canadian all in, which is somewhere around $40,000 US. And what you get with that is one of the most practical vehicles on the market, period. Because of this, it is honestly, it's a joy to live with. It has all wheel drive and it's most of what you need when you're looking for a pickup truck. It combines basically the best of the SUV world, the minivan world and the sedan world all in one great package. Lots of features on the interior, lots of features on the exterior, but let's get into it, go for a drive. So here's the deal, the Honda Ridgeline is probably in the top 10 most practical vehicles that you can buy on the market today, period. Bar none, it is one of the most practical vehicles. And as said very well by one of my good friends, it is what most people need when they're looking for a pickup truck. Most people do not need a Ram 1500, a Silverado 1500. Those are huge trucks in 2019 now, and they go for a lot more money than this Ridgeline. So basically how Honda is able to pull this off for $52,000, this is not a body on frame truck. So technically speaking, it is not a truck if you're comparing it to every other American truck on the market. It is a unibody construction. It sits on the same platform as the Honda Pilot and I believe the Honda Odyssey as well. So, so what that means is it is the nicest riding truck that we have filmed here on Roads Untraveled. It is the nicest riding truck I've driven all year. The only one that comes close would be the Ford Raptor, but even still this outperforms it in terms of ride quality on the road, bar none, 100%. It's a very smooth riding truck. It feels like an SUV. It's very smooth. It feels like a car, the way it takes corners. Uh, there's a little bit more body roll than you would get in a normal truck. Uh, and it has obviously coil and spring setup all around versus leaf springs in the rear, which most trucks do have. So there's a little bit of a trade-off. The towing capacity with the Honda Ridgeline with the Black Edition, which gives you all wheel drive, uh, is 5,000 pounds. So you can tow up to 5,000 pounds with this all wheel drive Ridgeline. Like I said, plenty for 99% of consumers on the road looking for a practical vehicle with a ton of storage, right? Uh, in comparison, a Colorado with the V6 can tow about 7,500 pounds. So there is a 2,500 pound towing capacity difference between a unibody truck like this and a normal body on frame American truck. But if you're looking for a practical vehicle that kind of rides a little bit higher, seats five people very comfortably, is extremely spacious, has all the safety features you could ask for, lane departure warning, it's got radar cruise control, it's got ventilated seats, it's got heated seats, it's got a heated steering wheel and a few other options that you do get with the Black Edition. Uh, and it's a really good package. I think Honda has done a good job at not trying desperately to compete with the likes of the Colorado ZR2, which is kind of a more off-road focused vehicle. This is not really an off-road focused vehicle. Like this isn't going off any jumps or anything like that. It's got very smooth all season tires on it. The road noise is very minimal. It's very quiet. Um, 
and it just rides very nice. You would never know that you're in a pickup truck if you didn't look in the bed of the truck. Now, I would call it a, a family truck, a camping truck. Uh, you can take it off-road with the, uh, with the all-wheel drive capabilities. It's probably never gonna get stuck. It has intelligent torque distribution with that all-wheel drive system. Uh, so basically, the front and rear distribution of the torque is controlled automatically by the differentials. Um, you can lock the rear differential in this truck, which is a great feature, uh, something that not even a lot of the American trucks have. You do have to option that up a lot of the times. Um, so with this black edition, you do get a lot of cool features. And then you have this econ button on the left side here, which basically all new Hondas have. And what that does, from what I can tell, is basically just change the throttle mapping. Uh, so it's not so sensitive and you actually have to be much more intentional with your throttle position to get the gas you need it to get going. Uh, and then if you take econ off, it's a little bit more twitchy. Therefore, you might use a little bit more gas. So just kind of the little things here and there that kind of help you to use less fuel. Now, this is a Ridgeline, it is a Honda. It's going to get good fuel economy, uh, even with a fairly large 3.5 liter V6. Speaking of fuel economy, this 3.5 liter V6 has direct injection and also cylinder deactivation, which makes it very economical, especially on the highway. Now, on the opposite end of this V6, it does have VTEC. So in layman's terms, if you don't know what VTEC is, basically when you are at the top end of the power band, when you are full throttle, you have a sticky situation you have to get out of, it basically gives you more fuel, more air, and gives you the maximum amount of power at the top end of the rev range. So 280 horsepower out of this V6, plenty of torque all around the rev band. So the transmission is a little bit slower to respond. I really did wish uh, it had like a manual mode where you could choose between the gears. It does not. But that being said, you know, it's pretty good for 90% of the scenarios you are going to encounter. It's a very smooth, seamless driving experience. That's what I'm getting for the Ridgeline. As a daily truck, it's much more livable than any other pickup we've filmed. Like I said, it's just, it's a step above in the ride quality uh, and the fit and finish in terms of a daily comfortable truck. In terms of practicality, it all comes back to what do you want versus what do you need? This truck is what 90% of truck buyers are looking to have in their lives, realistically. So I would highly suggest you take the Ridgeline out uh, for a test drive. No, it does not look as aggressive as a lot of these American trucks, but Honda doesn't need to play to that crowd, play to the, they don't need to have like a Bighorn edition or a whatever, a Texas edition. They don't need to have that. They're not catering to that market. So. The Ridgeline is kind of in a class all of its own, and I think it does a very, very good job at what it sets out to do. $52,000, I think, is a great price uh, for this truck, and I think you're getting pretty much all that you could ask for in terms of a utility vehicle. So this 2019 Ridgeline has a very similar problem that I found across Honda's lineup this year at least. And that is that the interior, it's kind of lacking a bit. I find it to be a bit dated in certain aspects. However, with this Ridgeline, they are starting to move in the right direction by implementing some cool features that I actually haven't seen in other vehicles before. Now before we hop on the inside, there is a feature I do have to point out that I thought was really cool. Now let's say that it's a nice sunny day and you wanna put the windows down. You have some people in the back of your tailgate, you don't wanna hop inside to turn on the vehicle to actually go through the process of putting all the windows down. Well, Honda's giving you a shortcut and this is really cool. So all you have to do is double tap the unlock button and just like that, all the windows, including the sunroof, will now open. So it just makes that so much easier. However, they did make putting all the windows up a little bit more difficult. 
because now instead of actually hitting the button twice, you have to remove the key from the fob, come over to the actual lock on the door, and then turn it twice. Whereas putting all the windows down, you can do it at a distance, but unfortunately to put them up, you have to do it while you're in obviously close proximity to the vehicle. But anyways, before we hop in the inside, there's a couple more features in the back here that you guys have to see. So they've given you the standard dual action tailgate, which allows you to open it up like a normal truck bed, or with a little latch here, you can open it up this way. So you have some great flexibility with the back here, opening it up in a lot of different angles that you can put stuff in. Now, unlike a lot of normal pickup trucks, um, the storage space here is quite limited. As you can see, it's quite shallow. However, they do actually give you some additional storage options down here. So it's obviously not as big as a normal pickup truck. However, they do utilize as much free space that they can with this vehicle to give you as much storage options as possible. Now, with this being the black edition, this is fully loaded. So they actually give you speakers in the back. So if you're at a sporting event and you're wanting to do some tailgating, you don't have to bring a speaker with you anymore because they actually have speakers embedded into the back here. And I can show you how you turn those on inside of the infotainment system, but I just think that's a great idea to really simplify your whole camping or tailgating experience. But anyways, let's hop in the inside and take a look at what the interior looks like. So like I said before, everything on the inside is pretty basic. It's a little bit dated here and there. However, there are some cool aspects that they do seem to be modernizing a bit. So I think they've done a great job with the seats to start with. They've implemented this nice red stitching throughout. And with this truck being fully loaded, you have not only heated seats, but vented seats as well. So you can see the perforated leather here with the actual red underneath that gives you that re really nice, cool effect. Um, the actual vented seats option in this car works surprisingly well. We filmed a couple Jeeps in the past that as soon as you turn on the vented seat option, you can actually hear the motor going and it's quite loud considering that you don't really get that much ventilation from there. However, when the actual vented seats are on in this vehicle, you don't really hear them at all and I think that's great. So taking a look at the center console here, there's nothing too spectacular going on. Everything's pretty basic. You do have your nice little storage option down here, which gives you quite a bit of storage space. Now they have used a lot of piano black throughout the center of the car here, which I'm not a big fan of overall. However, it doesn't seem to be scratching like I've noticed in other vehicles. So, so far it seemed to hold up pretty good. That being said, it is a newer vehicle, so only time will tell. Up from there, you have your infotainment system. And this is where I think Honda's 2019 lineup is really struggling with because it does not look like a 2019 vehicle as soon as you look at the infotainment system. The overall software looks really dated. It almost looks like an aftermarket head unit design type touchscreen. You have your volume controls on the side, which I really don't like having those as a touchscreen option as I find it a little bit finicky, especially when you're driving and you're wanting to make some adjustments. But overall, I think it could definitely use some work. Um, going through the menus, everything does seem to be pretty responsive. Um, there is a little bit of delay here and there, but it's just, it, they need to modernize it a bit. They need to really make it more of a custom fit for Honda. Um, that leads me into my biggest gripe with the Honda vehicles, and that's the backup camera. I've mentioned this on previous videos, but as soon as you put it into reverse, you can see the backup screen that comes up and the resolution is just terrible. Now, I've spent $30 on dash cameras on Amazon that have had 1080p resolution. So it being 2019, I don't think there's any excuse not to have a high resolution backup camera as technology has become so cheap and affordable that it's like, you, you gotta get on board with it. Um, so I do find that the actual resolution on the screen is quite poor. However, at least they do give you the option of looking straight down at your hitch for any type of like uh, small adjustments while pulling up to a curb or trying to hook up a trailer. Um, so overall it does work, it's just the resolution is not very good. From there, looking over at the steering wheel, I have to say that it does fit well in the hand and they do give you some nice easy to operate buttons all along the side. However, I don't, I'm not a big fan of the design of having these buttons down below as you really have to move your hands to the bottom of the wheel to operate it. I prefer a wheel that's designed more towards being able to operate it from keeping your hands in a single position. 
However, all the buttons are easy to operate, they feel great, and you don't even have to look at the wheel and I know exactly what I'm pressing, which is always a great sign. Ahead of the wheel, we have our gauge cluster. And again, it is very simple, it's very basic, and I just feel it almost, it, I just feel it's a little bit dated for 2019. However, they have incorporated physical needles along with LCD screens uh, on the inside for both your speed and then your information below that. Now, unlike the Acura that we filmed, I do have to say that the LCD screen is actually a pretty good resolution, and that's good to see because nothing drives me more insane than seeing an LCD screen with poor resolution. Again, it's 2019, let's come on. Uh, but anyways, it does look clear, it's easy to see, easy to operate, all the information is right there and you're never having to look around for anything. Um, I just wish that Honda spent a little bit more time making something that's a little bit more eye-catching. Finally, with this vehicle, I do have to say that I think they've done a great job of giving you a lot of different storage options. Just looking at the doors themselves, they give you a lot of different dividers and actually like three levels of storage space. So you'll never have to worry about trying to keep things organized as they, I think they've done a great job with the door options. But anyways, just to quickly sum it up, I think that they've done a great job with making things feel solid and well built. However, I wish they just put a little bit more into the design process to make things a little bit more eye catching and make it feel a little bit more modern. But anyways, let's hop back in the car with Marcus and finish up the review. Take it out of Econ here uh, and give it the beans. Takes a couple seconds to kick down. There's VTEC uh, and this is no slouch. It is a very quick truck with one person and nothing in the back. It is a very quick truck. Uh, I would argue almost as quick as that Colorado ZR2 with the V6 that we filmed very recently. Uh, yeah, pretty much covers all the bases. Honda's got everything checkboxed here. Uh, except for it is missing, you know, a couple thousand pounds in the towing department if you're looking to tow 7,500 pounds, which is an absurd amount of weight. Absurd amount of weight. I think 5,000 pounds is totally fine for most of the general population. So the Honda Ridgeline also has intelligent traction management, as Honda calls it. Uh, which allows you to switch between a normal mode for just kind of your on the street driving conditions, uh, snow conditions, mud and sand. So you kind of give the computer a little bit better of an idea what to expect in certain uh, driving conditions. And as you can see in sand mode, the revs have already jumped to 4,000 RPM uh, to give a little bit more power uh, instantly when you hit the throttle. And I'm sure a little bit more torque is sent to the rear wheels to maybe pull off some drifts or have a little bit of fun. So Honda has thought of the off-roading side of things as well, not only just the daily driving kind of uh, put your stuff in the bed and be done with it. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. This has been the 2019 Honda Ridgeline Black Edition. Uh, it, it's a fantastic truck, really good overall package. Uh, I wouldn't get it in black though, it's gonna scratch very easily, especially if you actually use it for a work vehicle. But Regardless, hit me up on Instagram at Roads and Travel if you want to kind of check out some behind the scenes stuff and what we're shooting on a day to day basis. But until then, this has been the 2019 Honda Ridgeline. We'll see you next time.